So you're wearing surgical masks. Mm -hmm. Whoever thought that a day like this would come. Mm. But you know, it's the simple truth is that the world right now is under a viral attack. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. And the toll on civilians is nearly incalculable. I, I saw something this morning that the number of sick in the U.S. has gone over 300,000. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's astounding. The number of, of dead just in New York is in the thousands. Um, fear has spread everywhere. That's why as I speak here this morning, there's a literal handful of people here. Um, and you know what? It's, I, I can understand, um, but I'm just not in that place. Um, fear has caused businesses to close. It's caused... You know, I read this morning that this one drug that's, that seems to be working so well. I recently read that in France. What, what is it? Hydro. What's the name of that drug they're using? It's like hydrochloroquine or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The hydrochloroquine. In France, they took eighty patients and gave them this. Seventy-eight of them walked out of the hospital like within a day or two. This stuff is. The results are astounding. The president is promoting the use of this drug because. This is the only thing they found that's working. They're using it in conjunction with with uh, an antibiotic. And supposedly, I mean, one guy on, on, on TV said, I thought I was going to die. And the next day I was able to leave the hospital. I mean, this is... But meanwhile, the governor of the state of New York has issued an executive order that pharmacies are not allowed to give it out. The only way you can get it is in a hospital, and the hospitals are overcrowded. They're mobbed. So, listen, this spirit of fear has gripped our politicians, our, our government leaders, uh, businesses are closing. Uh, it, it's, it's just crazy. People, so many, millions left unemployed. The entire world's economies are teetering right now. Um, but I want to share this word with you this morning. And this, you know, these words that I'm sharing with you right now aren't even part of today's message. But, but they're part of today's message. Amen? I, want, I want you to hear this word from Isaiah. In Isaiah 59 and 19, it says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Amen. This thing has come in like a flood. I mean, like overnight, the world was crippled mm. by, this, by this virus, this invisible enemy, as President Trump keeps referring to it as. And it's very true what he says. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it says that when, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, and that's who this is. Amen. This is of the enemy. This isn't God. I've heard some people say, oh, God is judged. You're out of your mind. <laughs> this isn't a matter of God... Jesus said the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I am coming, you might have life. Mm -hmm. God isn't judging the world. Mm -hmm. He sent Jesus into the world to save the world. Mm -hmm. Listen, this thing came in like a flood. But the word of God, God himself through his prophet, said I'm going to raise up a standard against it. Amen. Now, when I read this this morning, it reminded me of Moses lifting up a standard. Think about what happened. That was what appeared to be an absolutely impossible situation. Hopeless. Mm -hmm. A sea in front of them. The largest army in the world on their heels. And mountains on each side. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. Without God, the answer is nowhere. Mm -hmm. But what did God have Moses do? He raised up a standard. Amen. And what happened? 
The naturally impossible is what happened. Amen. The Red Sea parted, and the entire nation of Israel crossed the Red Sea on dry ground, not yes. even in the mud. Amen. Listen, I'm telling Same you that God, God is going to make a way. Yes. He's Absolutely. about to raise up a standard Hallelujah. and baffle this world. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Listen, I can only share these words with you in closing my introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Trust in the Lord. Yes. Amen. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Yes. And lean not on I don't understand it. Mm. Friends, that's got to be the key. Stop trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Let God be God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Bear with me just a minute while I get this thing to turn around. It isn't turning this morning. Figure it out. You all ready to get into the Word? Yes. The Lord's had me sharing recently on the, the armor of God. What he showed me is the <coughs> kingdom dress code. And today's going to be part three, and, and we're going to be looking today at the helmet of salvation. <coughs> and you know, God has given us all that we have need of. But we need to put it on. Amen? Amen? Amen. And we need to put it on not only to look like a kingdom citizen, but to live like a citizen of the kingdom of God in the earth. The Apostle Paul shared the revelation that he got from God this way. Ephesians 6, 10 through 17 in the Amplified. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. Put on the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. The army, uh, the armor of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies. That you may be able. Mm -hmm. So God gave us his personal armor. Amen. To enable us so that you may be, may be able, he said, to successfully stand up against all the strategies and deceits of the devil. Mm -hmm. For we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness against spirit forces of, of wickedness and heavenly supernatural sphere. Here he says it again. Therefore, put on God's complete armor. Amen. This is important. I know we've gone over this week after week, but we're going to go over it until we get it. Amen? Amen. Put on God's complete armor that you may be able, there it is again, to resist and stand your ground on that evil day of danger. Mm. You're in it. If you're hearing my voice right now, this is an evil day of danger. Mm -hmm. Where people are sick, people are hospitalized, governments are in trouble, economies are crashing, mm -hmm. people are dying. This is an evil day. Mm -hmm. And God has given us his armor to make it successfully yes, yes, through this day. Amen. Amen. He then goes on and says, stand there for having... Tighten the belt of truth around your loins and having uh, put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral restitute and right standing with God, which is the, the breastplate of righteousness. Having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability. I Amen. Like that. Amen. That always reminds me of Fred Sanford. <laughs> Fred Sanford would go staggering backwards. It's the big one, Elizabeth. And all you have to do is go and blow them all. Mm -hmm. Now, many of the hearing this have no idea who Fred Sanford was. <laughs> but trust me, it was a great show. And, and his instability reminds me of this. Man, we got to be firm-footed. Amen. Uh, Amen. We can't be staggering around at a time like this. That's Amen. right. we got to take a stand and mm -hmm. not move. Amen. Amen. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. Amen. It says, and lifting up the, this covering, 
the shield of saving faith, upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation, this is what we're talking about today, and the sword of the spirit, the sword that spirit wields, which is the word of the Lord. We've looked at the belt of truth. We've looked at the breastplate of righteousness. And today the Lord's going to have us discuss this helmet of salvation. Friends, this piece of armor is critical. It protects our head. Amen? Amen. Our head houses our brain. Our brain produces our thoughts. And our thoughts control our actions. Amen? This is essential. This piece of armor, as with the others, only helps when you put it on. Amen? Amen. Without a helmet on, your head is totally vulnerable, whether you're in a battle or on a skateboard or, or riding a motorcycle. There's an actor named Gary Busey who was incredibly popular, very successful, appeared in over 150 <clears throat> movies, um, some of which you might recognize the names like Lethal Weapon and Point Break and Under Siege, the Buddy Holly story, he was the star. <clears throat> well, he was a motorcyclist, and he was an activist, opposing legislation requiring people to wear helmets. He was out on his motorcycle one day, had an accident, was thrown through the air, and his head smashed right into a curb. His skull was fractured in a number of places. He died on the operating table... They had to revive him, and he's been brain damaged ever since. Terrible story. He didn't put his helmet on. He opposed the thought of even wearing a helmet. There's a movie out called Saving Private Ryan. And there's a scene in that movie where a soldier gets shot in the head and has a helmet on. He takes the helmet off to look where the bullet struck. And, and the enemy took advantage and shot him right in the face and killed him instantly because he didn't have his helmet on. What's the moral of the story? God gave us his armor. Put it on. Put it on. Amen. Put it on. Any place where you haven't put that piece of armor on, that place is vulnerable. Amen? Amen. There are those that believe that at the moment of salvation, the helmet is automatically on the believer's head. Well, in some ways, that might be true. You know, we put on Christ, doesn't the word say that? Who is our salvation when we're truly saved. However, the key is keeping it on. We've got to operate in a constant revelation of our salvation. And that's why it's the helmet of salvation. Amen? It's this, that revelation has to govern our daily lives. And, and, and it has to define how we perceive the things that we view in life. You know, we got to keep in mind for a minute, and I don't want to make this too long today, but I've only just begun. <laughs> we have to keep in mind that the descriptions that the Apostle Paul used of the armor were relatable to the people at the time. He used examples of the armor that they saw the Roman soldiers wearing because their area was under Roman occupation. So they saw Roman soldiers in the street all the time. They'd come down the street, you could hear them clanging for blocks with all their armor and the swords slapping and the breastplates and so when he spoke of these various pieces of armor, it, this was truly relatable to the people at the time. You know, it might not be so today. You know, people might think a breastplate of righteousness. All right, let's call it a flak vest. How about a bulletproof vest? You know, people can better relate to that. Hmm? But this particular piece, the helmet of salvation, when it was mentioned in those days, would cause people to see an image on the inside. That's what words do. They bring about an image on the inside, mm -hmm. in your mind. Mm. And the helmets that the soldiers wore in those days 
were really pretty wild. There was no mass manufacturing then. You know, today, if you look at a group of a thousand soldiers, every one of them looks exactly the same in their uniforms and their equipment. It wasn't that way then. Every helmet was handmade. There were no manufacturing techniques. And every helmet was made of bronze. And, and they were etched. They would have scenes of war and scenes of pastures and elephants and tigers. And they had all these things engraved on their helmets. But that was only the beginning. Then they had these big, huge plumes of feathers standing up out of the top of their helmet. And sometimes they would hang down their back almost to their waist. Yeah, you would think that they were sissy guys. <laughs> but this was just decoration. I mean, you know, when someone saw one of these guys coming, you could pick him out of the crowd. He stood, you know, way above everybody else with this plumage and... This, this beautiful, bright bronze so, uh, helmet, it made, it made them different. It made them stand out of the crowd. It made them noticeable. Mm -hmm. And so, a revelation of our salvation should make us different. Amen. And should make us stand out of the crowd. Amen. Should make us noticeable. Amen? Amen. It's all about getting a revelation of our salvation. Amen. Friends, putting on and keeping on this piece of God's armor, this helmet of salvation, will produce profound results in your life. Amen. How? Well, we have to thoroughly understand what the word salvation or saved really means. And then we have to strive to enter into it fully. Amen? Amen. Listen, the psalmist David shared this with us in Psalm 37. He said, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength, listen, in time of trouble. Hallelujah. And listen, and the Lord shall help them mm. and shall deliver them. Thank you. He Amen. shall deliver them from the wicked, listen, and shall save them because they trusted him. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. David had a revelation of salvation long before most other people. Listen, that's what got him through the whole pursuit of Saul. He had an army after him. Mm. He, he lost his own army and he was running with a group of vagabonds, running, hiding from cave to cave and he wound up the king. Mm -hmm. yeah. He had a revelation of salvation and he describes it to us right there. Mm -hmm. In your time of trouble, God is your strength. Yes, yes. Nobody else is going to be there. Hear me when I tell you. Amen. You don't have Hallelujah. friends that are going to be there when you're really down. <laughs> oh, they'll talk a good fight, mm -hmm. but they ain't showing up. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. That's how it is. Look around here tonight. There's nothing but empty chairs. Don't. And, and <laughs> people are at home. Thank God for live streaming. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it's it's concern, it's fear, it's it's actually, for some people, that'd be very intelligent. If they've got anything in their body, any kind of a respiratory history or recovering from anything, the last thing they want to do is be exposed to something. Mm -hmm. But you know what? No, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> Salvation. The word that David used. To sure. I want you to hear its definition. It's so simple. It's just like the New Testament definition. Teshua in Hebrew means deliverance, help, safety, rescue, and victory. Amen. That's who That's Jesus. your God is to you. Yes, yes, yes. This is, this is, this defines salvation. 
This is the word for salvation in Hebrew. Amen. And that's Amen. what it means. Mm -hmm. and, and according to David in Psalm 37, he said that this salvation is for us in our time of trouble. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of trouble going on. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The world is upside down right now. But there's one way through that Red Sea. Glory and to it's the standing of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Now, trouble. Thank you, Jesus. David said that the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord, and he's their strength in time of trouble. What does this mean, trouble? The literal translation from the Hebrew says time of affliction. Mm -hmm. How pertinent is that? Mm -hmm. Huh? He is your help. Your deliverer, yes. your healer, yes. in time of affliction, yes. in time of adversity, anguish, distress, or tribulation. That's what's going on in the world. Amen. That's what's got people at home. Amen. It's this distress. It's These are distressing times that we're living in. Yes, it is. Thank you, Lord. Friends, right now, millions are in distress. Amen. Millions are troubled. Millions are anguished over this threat of this COVID-19 virus. And the news reports that are filling the airways are really troubling. Mm. I mean, it's terrible. I don't recall hearing a, not a positive word in, in any news report for three weeks. No. It's, it's like, who can paint the worst picture and they think they're going to get the most no notoriety or something? And you know, the, the trouble is this, as I see it, is that these reports that carry fear, mm. some of those reports are getting through the helmets. Mm. They're getting, they're getting, the reports are getting in anyway. Mm. Whether the helmet's there or not. Mm. You see, if it's not there all the time, and if you're not walking in a, in a constant revelation of who you've been made in Christ, that's right. A constant revelation of, of your salvation. And this Jesus. stuff can creep in. Mm -hmm. Yes. Listen. I mentioned this last week, but it's worth mentioning again. If and when fear comes upon you, and if and when doubt starts creeping into your thinking, and if and when uncertainty starts taking up residence in you, and, and if and when the reports of man start speaking louder than the report of the Lord, if and when those things happen, look up to the cross. Amen. We've got to keep our eyes yes. on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. We've got to meditate on his word. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We've got to meditate yes. on what he achieved on that cross. Yes, yes. hallelujah. What did he accomplish Jesus. on our behalf on that cross? Yes, yes, and the yes. answer is Thank your you, salvation. Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much, Jesus. So good. Take this word daily. You know, it's called the gospel. <laughs> but for now, we'll call it the gospel. Amen. And yes. the Lord wants you to take this pill daily. Yes, yes, yes. We need that revelation of our salvation. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 in the Amplified says, Surely. Surely. So I'm going to stop right there just for a second. Mm. Surely. That's right. That means... Without question, without a doubt, absolutely, absolutely, positively, amen. Surely he has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, it says, and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. But he was wounded for our, our transgressions. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our, our guilt and iniquities. Amen. Amen. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. Jesus. And with the stripes Jesus. that wounded him, listen, Jesus. Jesus. we 
are healed and made whole. Hallelujah, Church, Jesus. Yes, glory, those glory. Of you that are hearing me, no matter where you oh, are, Rabash. this word is one size fits all. Amen. 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 This word applies to every person that has ears to hear Amen. and wants to receive. Yes, Lord. Jesus yes, Lord. died for each and every one of us. Jesus. Jesus. Personally. And it's our understanding and revelation of what Jesus has achieved for us that, that has to be that which shields us and protects us from the thief who Jesus told us would come to steal our birthright and kill us if permitted to. This is why it's so important that we put on the full arm. Yes, Lord. Not most of it, not some of it. But all of it. Amen. Any peace not perfectly in place leaves a vulnerability that the enemy will seize upon given the opportunity. The enemy will seek out and cap capitalize on your uncovered places. First Kings and also Second Chronicles share an account with us that are very interesting, having to do with the armor. So I'm going to read from Second Chronicles 18, beginning in 28. It says, So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I'll disguise myself. And go into battle, but you put on your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went into battle. <clears throat> now the king of Syria had commanded, that's who was battling against Israel. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots who were with him, saying, fight with no one, small or great, but only with the king of Israel. So they tried doing a switch on. Verse 31, so it was when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, who was dressed as the king, that they said, it's the king of Israel. Therefore, they surrounded him to attack. But Jehoshaphat cried out, listen, Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. And God diverted them from him. Ooh. Verse 32, for so it was, when the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. But listen. Now a certain man drew a bow at random, an archer, and struck the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. Mm -hmm. So he said to the driver of his chariot, turn around and take me out of the battle for I'm wounded. The battle increased that day, and the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot facing the Syrians until evening. And about the time of sunset, he died. Here he was, dressed in his armor, but part of him was exposed. And isn't it just like your enemy? To fire an arrow, seek that place, that's uncovered, where we're not under the covering. Mm -hmm. And take his life. Mm -hmm. You see, from this account, we can understand just how dangerous it is, dangerous it is for us to be unprotected, mm -hmm. to be out from under the cover. <laughs> Imagine how dangerous it is for a warrior to go into battle without a helmet. Are you kidding me? You know, the apostle said in Ephesians 6, 12, he said, for we wrestle. He used the word wrestle, not against flesh and blood. This word wrestle speaks of close hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's not like today where you can shoot a gun at a great distance or fire a cruise missile from 2,000 miles away. No, these guys... Sweaty, gnarly, stinky, bad breath. They, they locked hand in hand, face to face. Somebody was going to die. 
hand-to-hand combat. The Message Bible says, this was for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. This helmet is perhaps the most critical piece of defensive armor that a Christian has, just as it was to the Roman soldier. The soldier could get all dressed up in his armor, his breastplate, his boots, his belt, and go out against the enemy. And you know what the enemy used in those days? A weapon that was called a battle axe. Mm. Brutal, brutal weapon. I read an article by Rick Renner, and in that article he made this (laughs) statement. He used this statement. When the battle axes were used, heads rolled. Mm. They would literally remove the head right off the shoulders. Mm. If they chopped it this way, they'd take the head right off. Or if they came down this way, there would be brains and skull all over the place. Do you see why those men found it so critical to wear a helmet? The Lord is trying to tell us. I've given you a revelation of your salvation. You've got to put it on like a helmet to protect you from the onslaught of the enemy. When that part of our armor is missing, the enemy can and will have a field day with us. And it's going to begin right here in our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. It starts in the thoughts. We have to start right now. To think of ourselves as the Lord sees you. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus would have had a great view from that cross. Looking down on each and every one of our faces. Knowing us by name. And realizing exactly what he's done for each and every one of us. Knowing that in the future, this person would be afflicted with cancer, but he's, he already took that cancer on himself, yes. so you don't have to. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. And, and this person might be afflicted with COVID-19, but, but the Lord would realize, wait, I, I, that's yes. part of the junk I just bore on myself. So he or she doesn't have to. That's right, that's right. You see, we need to begin seeing ourselves as he sees us. Yes, Lord, thank you. We've got to see ourselves as victorious over COVID-19. We've got to see ourselves as healthy, as well. Yes, Lord. As safe, as, listen, as covered in the blood of God. Of Jesus. My God, yes, Lord. And by faith today, we have to enter into the fullness of our salvation. Yes, my God. Listen, it's not enough to be a little healed. Mm. It's not enough to be a little prosperous. That's right. That's right. It's not enough to have a little taste of victory. Amen. He wants you to operate. In the fullness of your salvation. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How do we do that? Thank you, thank you, thank you. We got to take that helmet of salvation. Yes, Father. We have to put it on each and every day. Yes, Father. Knowing who we've been made in Christ. Knowing that we've been recreated in Christ Jesus to be victors and no longer victims. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Father, I thank you for this service today. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that Lord, that each and every one of us here and everyone at home, Lord, I I pray that that you touch them. Yes, Lord. That you surround them. That you protect them. 
Lord, that you give them peace and that you keep them well and healthy. We thank you for it all, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen.